Matt Hooker here. Today's video is going to be focused on Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do is my original martial art that I started at the age of 15. So today's video, we're going to go over the Bruce Lee's five ways of attack. Now, the five ways of attack can be used in any martial art style, any boxing style, MMA, Taekwondo, it doesn't matter because they're concepts, okay? For the sake of the video, since this is a Jeet Kune Do video, I'm gonna stick to the Jeet Kune Do nucleus. You know, the tools and techniques that Bruce Lee used for his own Jeet Kune Do that he written about in the his many books, okay? Like Bruce Lee fighting methods and all the above. Okay, so let's go over the five ways of attack starting right now. Five ways of attack. Number one is going to be simple angular attack or simple angle attack. Or another variation of it, you see it written in several different ways in Bruce Lee's writings. He would say simple angle attack or he would use simple direct attack. Kind of the same concept. If the angle, I'm kind of angling in. If it's more direct, it's going straight in, okay? But they really mean the same thing, okay? So when Daniel's in his fighting stance, all right, remember, this is Jeet Kune Do now. I'm using the Jeet Kune Do nucleus, okay? Bruce Lee has a nucleus of what you have tools that you need to learn for Jeet Kune Do. So that means I'm gonna be strong side forward, okay? Since I'm right-handed, my right hand's gonna be forward. All right, I'm going to be in my fighting stance. All right, remember making sure my rear heel is up. All right, having that good medium bend in the knees. I'm here in the gun. I call it the gun side position. That's where we're going to start. Okay, so a simple angler attack is, for instance, we're going to use the main offensive weapon in Jeet Kune Do, which is that straight lead punch. Okay, so if I drive in, if I step in or explode into my opponent with a, with a single punch, like that, that's a simple direct attack, okay? If I step in with a back fist, that's a simple angular attack or simple direct attack. However, you don't want to make it too complicated, okay? All right, if, I, if I'm a little farther out and he's in a stance and I step in with a side kick to the knee, that's a simple direct attack or simple angular attack, okay? So anytime I just step in and kick him, or step in and punch him, whether it's a finger jab, a palm strike, whatever, or if I just drive in for a double leg takedown. That's a simple angular attack or simple direct attack. Okay, I've also heard it called single direct attack. It doesn't matter what you name it. If it basically boils down to like in fencing, it's a direct attack. Because you've got an indirect attack and a direct attack. Okay, so that is the first one of Bruce Lee's five ways of attack is a simple angle attack, okay? So when do I use this and when does it not work? Usually the higher the skilled skills of your opponent, the harder it is to hit someone with a simple attack or a direct attack, okay? That's when you gotta usually use an indirect attack, which we'll talk about in a moment. Okay, but I can surprise my opponent with just a simple attack. So if he's in his stance, and usually that's the beauty of the straight lead is that explosive step in, is I can be out here and boom, explode in with my straight lead or with my sidekick. So basically, I can, what if I were on peekaboo or Western boxing? If I just step in with the left jab, same thing. That's a direct attack, okay? So as long as you know if it's any kind of just direct attack, punch or kick, whatever, that's simple direct attack or single direct attack, simple angler attack. Now let's move on to number two. Five ways of attack. Number two is going to be hand immobilization attack. Okay, so when he's in his stance, hand immobilization. So what does that mean? So let's say his hands are a little bit are up and protecting his head. I can't hit him with a, a direct attack. You know, I might, you know, he's got his hands in. There's something obstructing my target, okay? So that's when I'm gonna use a hand immobilization attack, okay? So this is based off what your opponent gives you, okay? If it's a hand immobilization attack, I'm gonna somehow manipulate 
attack, manipulate his arms to clear a line of attack so I can hit him. Okay? A lot of times, you know, it could be as like a slap, a slap block. It could be a grab. Okay? It could be anything. It could be my forearm. I'm using a part of my body to, to move his arms out of the way, okay, or secure and mobilize his arms so I can hit him. It's that simple. You know, at the end of the day, I'd rather just step in and hit him with a direct attack. There's more power. Okay, anytime I have to manipulate his arms, it's going to take some of the body movement out of my power. I mean, the power out of my attack. Okay, so I'll give you some examples of hand immobilization attack. So based off right there. Okay, so if he's in this type of stance, that's the gun sight stance in Jeet Kune Do or the Bajon. Okay, if it's here, I can move, the, I can attack this arm with some type of parry or grab to move it and then hit. So for example, instead of me just hitting them with the straight lead, I'm gonna use my inside parry with my left hand and trap, kind of grab, trap that arm and then hit him. So now I mobilize that arm. And then from there, I can enter in with my combinations, okay? Let's say his hands are high, okay? Use, if he's like a high guard, what I can do is the same concept, but instead of coming with the straight lead, because this is covered, it's gonna be hard for me to get this out of the way, is I can immobilize his arm and then hit him with that lead shovel hook, okay? Or I can use that lead arm to immobilize his arm and hit him with the rear body hook, okay? Or if I can reach in and grab this with my lead arm, pull it down and hit him with the cross. Okay, so you can see that these are concepts. You know, the only way you're gonna get good at these is you gotta play with them and spar. Everything you teach with Jeet Kune Do, anything, you have to spar and you have to find out what works against different opponents. This, if he's got a high guard and I can't be doing stuff like this, he's protected. Okay, so I gotta get more creative. Okay, maybe I'll reach in and pull this down and then, then, then hit. Okay, so the, you know, the sky's the limit with the imagination that you can put into these different types of hand mobilization attacks. Okay, so just a quick review, come here a little bit. So a quick review, a hand mobilization is I'm gonna remove or mobilize one of his guarding hands to clear a line to attack. Okay, Vasily Lomachenko, perfect example of hand immobilization attack. So when he's here, he'll pull one of his arms down and hit. Or if he's up again, he'll reach out, pull the arm down and hit. Perfect example of hand immobilization attack. Everybody thinks that hand immobilization attack is based out of Wing Chun, which is some concepts from like the slap block the lock style, different grabbing techniques that you can use out of the Wing Chun, okay? But this ain't reality, okay? This is reality. We're here, we're fighting, we're working a straight lead, and then let's say I come in and immobilize it and hit it with the palm strike, okay? And then maybe I can pull into an elbow, okay? You always gotta train as if you're, you're training against someone who's got good hands, a good boxer, okay? Because a lot of the stuff works when you're training against other Jeet Kune Do men, but when you spar someone with a different style, it doesn't work. Why? Because you're not used to it. That's why I highly suggest that you have, make friends, make buddies in different gyms, you know, whatever. If you just train with Jeet Kune Do guys all the time, you're not gonna know what it's like to face a boxer, okay? You're not gonna know what it's like to face someone who does Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu or wrestling, okay? So you gotta, you gotta get all types of sparring against different opponents and find out what works. If it doesn't work, you crumble it up and throw it away, discard it. Okay, so now let's move on to, no oh wait, real quick, real quick, I about forgot. Hand immobilization is not the only thing you can immobilize. You can immobilize the leg or the head. So he's in a stance. Remember this classic dirty boxing technique. If I step in with the straight lead or jab and I step on his lead foot, boom, and he tries to pull back, you know, 
That's a foot or leg immobilization attack. Okay, if I come in and I get my leg inside his leg, nope, this is getting your stance, and I buckle him, push it down, or I pull his leg out, that's a leg immobilization attack. What I do in kickboxing, he's in his stance, a lot of times I'll throw my hand up when I'm sparring, and I'll step in and just sweep, try to sweep that leg out, just to disrupt their balance. Not to take him down, sometimes I can. Okay, so that's a leg immobilization attack. Remember, get creative. All right, what if I do that oblique kick? Oblique kick, and then I drive down and buckle. That's a leg immobilization attack, okay? Or I got a head immobilization attack. One of my favorites is going into the clinch is like your necktie positions, okay? Now I'm kind of dipping into other martial arts other than Jeet Kune Do. But I can pull those concepts and techniques into my own personal Jeet Kune Do. Okay, that's more Muay Thai when you get into the neckties. Let's say I come in, you know, and I throw a jab, and I step in, and I palm strike him as I, I mobilize his arm. But then I hook his head, and I get him in that necktie position and start hitting him, hitting him, pulling in the knees. That's a head immobilization. You know, what if I get here in his self-defense, and he has longer hair, and I grab the back of his hair, headbutt him. Okay? That's a hand I mean, a head immobilization attack, okay? So keep that in mind. You don't only got the hand immobilization, you got the leg immobilization, and then you got the head, okay? If I go in and grab his leg and pull him into a single leg takedown, technically that's a leg immobilization attack, okay? So now let's move on to number three. Five ways to attack, number three is gonna be progressive indirect attack. When we talked about the first one, which was your simple angular attack, I, I noted that it's a direct attack. So you got a direct attack where he's in his stance and I just step in and hit him with a punch or kick, okay? Now an indirect attack or a progressive indirect attack is I'm gonna start on one line and then enter in on a second line. So this is where you can use your fakes or your feints, okay? I'm gonna faint one line and then attack another line. Let me give you some classic examples. So he's in his stance. Let's say I step in, I fake high, and his hand draws his hands up. Fake high, then go low. Okay? Or I can fake low and go high. And it can be used with any punch. I can fake low with the cross, come with the hook to the head. I can fake with the hand, go with the leg. I can fake with the kick, go with the hand. Okay? So this, like I said before, you can use your imagination and come up with different. Everybody's going to do different stuff that works for them. You've got to find out what works for you and discard what doesn't work, okay? So, a progressive indirect attack. So let's say we're sparring, we're moving around, I hit him with the jab, okay? Let's say he's doing that high guard, boom. All right, what's open? The low line, right? So I'm gonna go fake the high line, go the low line. But let's say I'm going jabbing and he's dropping that lead, like kind of parrying my arm, boom. Okay, what's open? He's closed that line, but he left this line open. So I'm gonna use progressive indirect attack, and I'm gonna fake it and then go high. Or fake it and go high. And it could be hand or foot. Okay, it can be hand or foot. Let's say we're in our stance, and I use that lead hook kick, and he leg checks it. He's leg checking, shit. I wanna hit him with that kick, but I can't because he keeps blocking it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit him with a back fist or a jab. So I'm here. I get boom. He gets in his stance, in your stance. Boom, I'm hitting here, hitting him here. If that's set up, then I can fake that and go low. What if you're a grappler or a jujitsu guy? All right, maybe I'll go here. I'll, I'll fake the overhand and go in for a double leg. All right, or I fake high and go low. All right, so that's progressive indirect attack. Usually you're going to fake one line and enter in a different line. You can enter in the same line. Because when you fake, you want to draw his defense out. Okay, so if I throw that jab and he does that cross parry, and he does it a little too hard, poof, so we're here, we're moving, poof, okay, then maybe next time I draw that cross parry and come in with the hook. That's a progressive indirect attack. Now let's move on to number four, which is my favorite. Bruce Lee's five ways of attack, number four, which is my favorite, and that every single Jeet Kune Do man or fighter in general needs to learn and do, and that's attack by combination. 
Okay, attack by combination. So when we're sparring or you're fighting whatever competing, he's in the stance. Okay, if I can hit him with a single angle attack, that's good, right? Maybe I counter punch him, maybe I stop hit him, maybe I get him for a good kick. I could stop the fight. But most likely people are tougher than that. It takes more than one punch, one kick to stop someone, okay? Bruce Lee said it best, when you're talking about total fighting, you gotta train every part of your body. And you gotta learn to put combinations, hands and foot together without even thinking, okay? So this is one of my favorite because when the dust settles, and the flashiness wears off, and the exhaustion kicks in, all right, that's when, that's when the real fight begins, and that's when I start grinding and sparring, okay? If you ever spar me, if I see you get tired, I start grinding, I call it Hell's Kitchen. What does that mean? I start using attack by combination, okay? Because when you're first beginning in sparring or fighting, when you're out here, you're, you're afraid. You're afraid of getting hit. You don't know what's going on. I don't know how strong he is. I don't know how hard he hits, how fast he is, how tough he is. I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to pick and choose wisely what I attack him with. Okay, hand or foot. Okay, but once I get, get going and feel it out, I can start, if I start touching him with my jabs, my kicks, and I start hitting him with my counter punches, my stop hits, maybe he gets tired, maybe he gets hurt. You know, that's when I'll start attacking with combinations, okay? Combination punching and kicking is how you're going to get good in sparring, okay? It's how you're going to get good because you got to understand one punch. You don't want to be the one hitter quitter. It happens. In some of my amateur fights, I've hit someone one punch and, and stopped them. It happens. Usually it comes out of nowhere, okay? But usually what wins fights is the person that can put good combinations together, okay? Good combination. Why hit someone once when you can hit them four times, okay? Why try to, a lot of people, the common mistake of the beginner is they load up those one shots, those one hitter quitters, instead of learning to be smooth and fast and putting combinations together. So attack by combination is basically the backbone of fighting, all right? It's getting aggressive, putting those combinations together. So let me give you an example. All right, he throws that jab, and I stop hit him. I parry and straight lead him at the same time. All right, what's better? He moves around, he throws that jab, and I whoop, hit him. What, now, is that, that's good, right? But is this better? He does it again. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop. What's, what do you think is more effective? Or he does it again, and I go boom, kick, whoop, whoop, and then step in with my hand combination. That's what you want to try to achieve. The highest level of an elite fighter or Jeet Kune Do man or woman, all right, is to be able to counter punch or stop punch your opponent in combination, all right? So instead of me just here, you know, pot, pot shotting him, okay, I'm gonna be here and then hitting him when he throws a jab, let's say I counter him and then I put, combinations together, okay? Put combinations together, okay? So not only are you using it offensively, so let's say I use a indirect attack, I fake low, go high, instead of throwing one, I'm gonna throw two, and then add a kick, okay? A good rule of thumb is, <laughs> this is gonna sound mind trippy, all right? Always end your punch combinations with a kick. And here's the other side. Always end your kick combinations with a punch, all right? It's just a concept, but what that teaches you is to keep moving and to punch and kick in combination, okay? I see people all the time sparring. They're here, one shot, okay? One shot, one shot. Okay, maybe they throw that head kick, one shot, one shot, okay? Against a good Jeet Kune Do man or a good skilled fighter or a boxer, one punch, one kick ain't gonna do it. You gotta start, you gotta start. You see how I'm doing that? Boom, boom, boom. You know, boom, 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 boom. Putting combinations together where they can flow without even thinking. Okay, so that's number four, attack by combination. Bruce Lee's five ways of attack, number five is the hardest, I wouldn't say hardest, 
but it takes a lot of skill and practice to pull this off and it's called attack by drawing okay attack by drawing so when he's in the stance and then just for the sake because this is a jikudo video i'm going to have him in a jikudo thing but he can be in a left stance whatever any kind of stance okay so just a quick review on the first four you know simple angle attack as i come in at an angle i can shoot at the slant the slamming right straight lead whatever or simple direct attack single direct attack there's various names in bruce lee's writings what he calls it but it's the same i'm going to attack with the hand or the foot okay second second one is hand immobilization attack i'm going to remove or mobilize the hand to open the line to hit him and it could be with the head or with the leg okay the third one is progressive indirect attack that means i'm trying to draw his defense up i'm going to fake a high line and go low or fake a low line go home um high you get the point okay i'm going to try to fake one way and go the other hand or foot okay number four my favorite attack by combination okay because you just don't even know what it's like when you fight someone that throw in combinations it's extremely hard okay extreme extremely hard to deal with them but if they're just pot shot in onesies and twosies that's easy okay so number five is attack by drawing and a lot of times this is based on your stance what you do with your fighting stance so you can change your fighting stance or manipulate it in a way especially your arms to to show your opponent an opening on you let me give you an example so if i'm in the gun sight you can no stance and then i drop it this is what i call the gunslinger right i lower this hand so what this if he's used to seeing my hand up dealing with my hand out here then i drop it he's like oh sh there's an opening so then he's going to step in with that that uh that cross usually he's going to try to hit me with that cross because i'm open but what i'm doing is i'm setting traps so in essence attack by drawing is you're setting a trap or baiting a trap so when i'm here in the gun sight and i drop it and he throws that and i do a stop hit hit him or he throws it again and i hook over the top with a with a stop hit or a counter punch i basically set the trap i baited him in another example let's say i'm in the gun sight stance and i take it to the high guard i do this a lot this is one of my favorites i'll transfer from the gun sight to like a high guard. You see how more here to here. What does a high guard do? It draws his punches high, okay? So when my hands are here, he thinks I'm easier to hit. So he's hitting me, hitting me with punches. He's right, I am easier to hit, I'm right here. But what I use it for is I get him punching on my arms and then I do what I call a pull count. So he's hitting me with the jab, jab, Hit me with a jab, and I pull, and then hit. You see, Canelo does this all the time. He'll step in at that high guard, draw your punches, and then use head movement and counter punch. Another thing that the high guard can do is, is if you have your forearms up, they're going to try to go to your body, which is good. That's what I want. As long as you plan for it and set the trap, bait the trap. So he's in his stance, and I'm in the gun sight. Right, back up a little bit. There you go, buddy. Uh, right here and I go like this and he tries to go that body jab now and I just step in and I intercept him or he does it again boom or he does it again boom I can hit him or he does it again you know I can I can parry him and throw a kick okay it doesn't matter whatever you want to do is the concept of it so that's attack by drawing okay so maybe I go out here Maybe I get my hand out. What's this going to make him do? He's probably going to try to kick me. And then he goes for a kick, and I step in and counter punch him or stop him. So just a quick review. I know this is a long video. Number one, simple angular attack or single direct attack, however you want to call it. Number two is hand immobilization, head immobilization, hair immobilization, or leg immobilization attack. Okay, number three is gonna be progressive indirect attack. Fake one line, go on another. Okay, number four is gonna be attack by combination. Okay, putting your hands and feet together in combination. And number five, the final one, is gonna be attack by drawing or what I call setting traps, baiting the trap. 
Okay, that is it. I hope you learned something. Have a good day.